What if I told you that the solar array that we use to power our off-grid homestead was installed for a fraction of the cost that a solar company would charge you to build one of the same size? Then what if I continued to tell you that you could do the same thing on your off-grid homestead? Most folks who have a solar array installed would pay between fifteen dollars and $20,000 for one of this size but we did it for well under five. In this video, I'm gonna show you the components you need to install your own off-grid solar array, how to do it on the cheap, and tell you the truth about the efficacy of off-grid solar panels so that you don't find yourself without power when you most need it. If that sounds like something that would help you on your off-grid living and homesteading journey, let's talk about it. I'm gonna start by dispensing with the myth that Solar power is prohibitively expensive. When we lived in the city, we paid between $300 and $400 a month for electricity. Now, we did live in a place where utilities were expensive. For the same amount of power, we probably would have been paying $200 a month if we lived somewhere where the per kilowatt price was significantly cheaper. In an off-grid situation, you don't have a utility company. So you gotta figure out some way to get power for the things that you wanna power, or, you know, use whale oil for your candles. Personally, I like my off-grid things that require power, my computer, my internet access, microwave, a blender, all of that stuff requires power, and we needed some solution for that. Solar power was the most obvious choice. So let's take a look at the components of a solar array. These are Canadian solar, 400 watt panels. When you're looking at solar panels and comparing the price of them, oftentimes you'll see an overall price. It'll be like $300 for a panel. And then you see another panel that's $150 for a panel. The cost of the panel is not the important part. What's important is the per watt price. And for these panels, we got them for 57 cents per watt. Now the solar panels don't really do much of anything if they don't have the electronics to support them. This is the inverter that we use. Now the electronics that you need are something to take the high voltage DC power from your solar panels and turn it into a usable DC voltage to charge batteries and then turn that DC voltage into AC voltage to power your house. The thing I like about this inverter is that it is an all-in-one inverter. Not only is it super cheap, but it works really well. We've had only a few little problems and they always turned out to be settings problems. And once I got all that sorted out, it's been a great inverter. The way this works is all the solar panels are connected in series. So although each individual solar panel only makes about between 40 and 48 volts. Because they're all wired in series and there's eight of them, I end up with somewhere around 300 volts coming out of it. Now that sounds scary, but more on that in a moment. That wires into this unit, which turns that low amperage, high voltage DC power into high amperage, 48 volt DC power. And then that circuit regulates how much power goes into the batteries. Then out of the batteries, that power is converted into AC power, just like you have in your house, and goes to this distribution center, which powers our house. You should be able to source the solar panels, whatever you're gonna use for racking, the wire, any fasteners you might need, and all the electronics for under a dollar a watt. This is a 3,200 watt solar array, and it costs us about $2,800 to put together. Now you also need the batteries, which if you've seen our older videos on this whole solar array, you'll know that at one point I realized that having the batteries so close to the chickens and the chickens kicking up a bunch of dust, we're gonna make the batteries all dirty and that I promised that I was going to build an enclosure for the batteries to keep them clean. Well, I haven't done that yet. So these are the batteries that we use. They're the Lytime 12 volt, 230 amp hour lithium ferrophosphate batteries. 
We're gonna talk more about batteries in a few minutes, but that's where all the power from the solar arrays goes into so that we can use that power when it's dark. And these batteries were about $1,600, $1,700 for the entire set, but you can actually put together a very robust battery system by going to Batteries Plus and buying their six volt, 275 amp hour golf cart batteries. And those work great. But I will say the difference between lithium ferrophosphate batteries and lead acid batteries is that the lithium battery is gonna last significantly longer. They're more expensive, so they're more of an investment, but they'll go from fully charged to fully discharged anywhere between four and 6,000 times, whereas your lead acid batteries are only going to be able to do that full cycling anywhere from 300 to 500 times. So they're twice as expensive, but they'll last four to five times as long, or even six to 10, or whatever that math works out to be. All in all, that entire solar array cost us under $5,000 to put together. And if you compared that to what we were paying for energy when we lived back in the city, this would have paid for itself in about 15 months. And because residential solar panels will last anywhere between 25 and 30 years, that means we're getting like 26 and a half years of free electricity out of them. So there's some upfront cost, but over the long run, you save a tremendous amount of money with solar. So why is all this stuff going around that solar is prohibitively expensive? Well, that's because that's what we installed this for. But what most people's experience is, is going through a solar installation company. Remember when I said that you ought to be able to get all of these components for around a dollar a watt? Let's just set the battery system aside. The average cost for a company to come in and install solar to the consumer is anywhere between $3.50 and $4.25 per watt. Meaning that having a solar company install your solar for you is almost four times as much as doing it DIY. Now I'm all for good paying jobs, but I'm not gonna pay someone four times as much to do something that I can do. And if you're gonna install a battery as well, that can almost double that cost. And for me, that's a non-starter. All this to say that the overall cost of installing solar with a professional company is about a quarter to one third materials cost and the rest of the cost is company profit, installation labor, and sales commissions. You might as well just collect all that stuff up yourself. But you're asking yourself right now, but Jason, isn't it super dangerous? You were just talking about high voltage DC power, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I'm gonna tell you, if you can install a ceiling fan, you can install solar. If you can plug in a vacuum, you can install solar. Now, if you're a solar installer, don't take any offense to this. I know you're gonna say, well, insurance is really expensive. Yeah, that's true. Some solar companies can be charged up to 30% of their installation cost for insurance. But you know why? It's because most of the injuries that happen on a solar installation happen from people falling off of roofs. It has nothing to do with getting electrocuted. When you live off grid, there's no reason to take the extra effort to install your solar panels on your roof. Just do a ground mount array. It'll give you more surface area to collect water from. You can use it like we did and make it be the shaded section for your chickens and ducks to have an area to get away from the sun or even turn it into a storage shed. Boom, doing a ground mount solar array just took about 80% of the danger out of doing it yourself. You're welcome. Modern solar is basically plug and play. You got these handy little connectors that come on every single solar panel that you would buy today called MC4 connectors, which make it really, really safe for you to actually make the electrical connections. And the only place that you're ever coming in contact with the voltage that's coming out of the solar panels themselves is at the inverter. Well, all you really have to do is before the inverter is connected to the solar, hook up your wires that have the appropriate MC4 connectors on the ends of them, and then you're still using the MC4 connectors to make the final connection that electrifies the inverter, and you're never actually coming in contact with 
any of the higher voltage that could actually be dangerous. I put together an entire playlist on my page that walks you through literally every step of installing solar yourself, how to do it safely and correctly. So after this video is done, and you're feeling all amped up and confident and ready to take on the solar world. Watch that playlist and it'll actually give you the step-by-steps. I mean, when we did our solar installation, I actually got the entire family involved in it. The kids are out there helping me put together the racking and painting everything. Carrie's out there helping me put the panels in and I make the final connections. So I'm telling you, the installation is really not that big of a deal. Most solar companies would take an entire day to do an install like this. We did it in three days. So even the time investment isn't all that significant. As another aside, if you're not off grid and you're thinking about doing the installation yourself, just realize that ultimately all of those electronics are going to connect to the grid. So if you're not confident with dealing with household 240 volt electricity, you can do the entire install and then hire a service electrician to come in and install the breaker and turn the thing on. Now, in most cases, when you're connecting to the grid, you're gonna need permits, inspections, an interconnection agreement with the utility company, et cetera, et cetera, which does increase the amount of time you're gonna spend on that project and probably the amount of money that you're gonna spend on it as well. So just keep that in mind. What I'm talking about is an off-grid system, but check out what your local authority having jurisdiction has to say about that. That way you don't get yourself into any trouble. So one of the things that I wanted to cover in this video is the efficacy of solar in different types of weather, different seasons, etc. On our off-grid homestead, the majority of the power that we generate is generated by solar. And that also happens to be the same way Superman gets his power. So I'm in good company. What I think a lot of people leave out in solar videos is that the one thing that is necessary for a solar panel to generate power is the sun. Depending on where you live, if you have harsh winters and your solar panels get covered up by snow, if you have a significant period of the year where you have overcast clouds in the sky and it's blocking out the sun, well, in those conditions, your solar panels aren't gonna do a damn thing. So you're gonna need a generator. You're also going to need a fuel for that generator. So those costs have to be taken into consideration. We have anywhere between 270 and 300 days of sunshine per year, and that's plenty. You can build a battery bank that will make it through those individual days if you wanna do that. Personally, I just find it easier to have a generator that connects through our electronics and pretends to be the grid so that the generator running will also charge the batteries and power any loads we have during those days where the sun is nowhere to be found. People who tell you that your solar array is gonna provide all the power you need when it's covered in eight inches of snow are lying to you. And I, I just, I wouldn't feel good about doing that. So, you know. Down in the description below, I've put a link to the playlist that shows you how to do an install from figuring out how much you need all the way through to turning it on. I've also linked into our Amazon shop where I've put together a list of all the different components you could possibly need for an install, including the components that we use, but also comparable ones if they're not available on Amazon. I have links to the batteries that we use in my link tree, which is also linked in the description. I wanna make this process as easy as it possibly can be for you. So any of the resources that you might need, probably gonna be down in the description below. So to recap, here's the truth about solar power. If you're the type of person who needs electricity in their life, solar power is gonna be the most efficient, least maintenance, and simplest way for you to get that power. It's also gonna be the cheapest. Bringing utilities to a remote property can cost many, many thousands of dollars. And you can generate all the power you need from having probably less solar panels than you might think. Your other options are things like wind and generators and hydroelectric, all of which shouldn't be used as your main source of electricity. 
you can supplement your solar power with all of those things, and that's great. But remember, when things have moving parts, they require maintenance. It's been my experience that whenever I've put any of those kind of things into use here on our off-grid homestead, I've always spent a bunch of time fiddling with it. And I just want to set it and forget it. Like Jack LaLanne's turkey maker. Wait, no, he was the juicer guy. Anyway, you know what I mean. That dude was like 90 and he could do a bunch of pull-ups and stuff. It made me feel terrible about myself. So there's the truth. And I'd love to know from you in the comments below, what's your biggest concern about having power on your off-grid homestead? Do you have any questions about solar? Do you want to talk to me more about the whole idea of getting your power from the same source as Superman? Any of those things are fine with me. Leave them in the comments below. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. But most of all, I hope that you feel confident that this is something that you could do yourself and that you don't have to pay four times as much to a company to do it for you. All that being said, hope to catch you in the next one.